Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. So we started the year with a very noticeable uptick in serious violent crimes. Year to date, we've had 26 actual homicides. This month alone, our city has had 28 separate shooting incidents. That's absolutely unacceptable. I want the public to know that we, what we've been experiencing in regards to shootings in our city have mostly been very personal, highly targeted incidents. Our detectives investigating, investigating these in events inform me that they're learning of incidents with multiple shooters, close ties between victims and suspects, and escalations of disputes and fights. Again, the vast majority of the shootings have not been random in nature and the motives behind them have been tied to the relationships between the suspects and the victims. Yesterday, our city had two publicized shootings that occurred during broad daylight for these reasons. One on Nicholson Drive, where three suspects specifically targeted another male as he was exiting a convenience store. Another at Howell Park, where a 14-year-old suspect produced a handgun and began shooting during a fist fight. In my first 50 days, I sat down with all shifts of uniform patrol and their supervisors. I have directed my officers to engage in proactive policing in addition to the nearly 30,000 calls they've responded to so far this year. That proactive policing has led us to making the following stats. 734 felony arrests, 176 juvenile arrests. We've made 15 homicide arrests. Of those 15, six have been juveniles. This is very alarming considering last year, nine juveniles were arrested for homicide in the total of 2023. We're already up to six. We've seized 306 guns and recovered approximately 200 stolen vehicles. Our suspects and victims are not only increasingly familiar with one another, but they are getting younger and younger. With the school year winding down and the summer months fast approaching, it's time we further start to zero in on the small group of individuals that are involved in the shootings in our city. I am increasing resources to divisions that are more proactive in their enforcement and information gathering to prevent these shootings from occurring. With funding help from the mayor's office, in the past week I've initiated more directed, proactive overtime patrols. This will result in the public seeing more police units on the streets. These proactive patrols are directed by information from our VCU detectives, intelligence units, federal task force partners, and crime analysts. We are already seeing the benefits from these patrols in making of arrests and seizing illegal firearms and narcotics. We are continuously enhancing our technology assets, installing more license plate readers, new crime cameras, and encouraging members of the community and business, business owners to assist with our camera sharing programs. To those of you out there resolving your disputes with violence, I speak with members of the community every day. They want you off the streets. I want you off the streets. And we will all be working together to get you off the streets. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Chief Morris, as your mayor, I refuse to back down from this challenge. Throughout my tenure, I have faced adversity head on, whether it was a natural disaster or a global pandemic, and I will not waver in my commitment to ensuring the safety and well-being of every resident in Baton Rouge. It disappoints me to see law-abiding citizens who contribute to our community and abide by the rules having to watch as those who choose to break the law openly defy the peace and safety we all have a right to. Let me make one thing abundantly clear. The individuals perpetrating these crimes are a small number, as you heard the chief said but their actions are having far-reaching consequences. And to those who believe they can escape the law, I say this with absolute certainty. It will not happen. If you break the law, you will be investigated, arrested, 
and held accountable by our criminal justice system. It pains our community to see the vicious retaliation and targeted murderers, murders with no regard for bystanders, time of day, or location. No family should have to be subject to mourning the loss of a loved one instead of celebrating their milestones. It's not enough to just say we're tired of our youth being at the core of senseless violence. Our focus is laser sharp on the small number of individuals who are causing violence and unrest in our streets. Gun violence in particular has been a persistent challenge that we have tackled head on, day in and day out. My administration, our law enforcement agencies, and community organizations have been doing the work. We've invested in cameras with gun detection and technology to enhance our ability to prevent and solve crimes. As you just heard Chief Morris say, Baton Rouge Police Department has ramped up extra patrols, giving more visibility and to ensure a constant police presence to prevent actual criminal activity and respond quickly. We have regular conversations with our city leaders on how we can decrease violence, especially among our youth. We are doing our part, but we need you, the community the citizens, to do yours. We need everyone to do their part. As the mayor president of this parish, I understand my responsibility as a leader. However, I want to be clear that everyone engaged in law enforcement in this parish is pulling together in the same direction. Prosecutors, of course, have to prosecute. Judges have to hold individuals accountable. And of course, the multiple law enforcement agencies in this parish have to unite together. I have seen an increase in that process taking place. But we need to all work together to stop this problem now. And let's not forget, we've been here before. And just as we have done before, we will drive down the crime statistics once again. The facts don't lie. We know when we zero in on shootings and those individuals involved in those shootings that we see results. We know when the community works hand in hand with law enforcement to provide crucial information, we see results. We see results when people make arrests and prosecutors bring cases to court. The judges can effectively dispense justice. I'll close by saying this. Quite frequently I hear people tell me, Mayor, we see you everywhere in the community. Well, that's because I'm a boots on the ground mayor. And I am committed to this community and to solving this problem. But I can't do it alone. We need the entire community to come together, united in our resolve to reclaim our streets and make Baton Rouge a safe city once again. Together we can overcome obstacles. We've done it before, and together we will overcome this. Now, you've heard the chief talk about strategy. You've heard me allude to some of the strategy that we're using, what we've done, and what needs to happen practically and tactically. But I want to leave you by asking you to pray for this city and parish. I believe it's fitting because it's Holy Week. We are putting the work next to our faith, but I know firsthand that prayer works. And despite the numbers, I believe that we can have divine intervention to assist our officers and move on the hearts of men and women to stop this senseless crime, and lawlessness. I believe our prayer can bring crime to an end and resurrect safety in our community. Thank you. Now we will uh, answer a few questions. Question for the Chief. Uh, so what conversations are you having with our judges in the area about you know, making sure that your officers aren't just going out arresting the same folks over and over again? 
So I haven't had many conversations. I've only met with one judge so far that um, invited me out. Have had a lot of conversations with uh, um, our district attorney, Hiller Moore, um, and we work closely uh, with updating him on the process of our cases to try to increase the bonds and look to reduce the number of our repeat offenders. A quick follow-up question. You, you started your press conference by saying that each of these cases are you know, involving folks that knew the people they were targeting. But well, what about the bystanders? You had one person hit with a straight bullet. Uh, what, what about the folks that who don't know these individuals that intended to do harm? What, what, what do you have to say to those folks? Yeah, so unfortunately bullets don't have names on them. Um, and a vast majority of our homicides and our non-fatal shootings have been close relationship ties. Um, but just over the weekend, for example, one of my units that I had on directed patrol um, was involved in a vehicle pursuit behind a stolen car. Subject in that car got out, shot at the officers that were chasing him. That bullet missed the officers and um, unfortunately went through a house and struck an innocent bystander in the lake. Um, that is what I mean by the bullets don't have names on them and why we have to crack down on these suspects with these guns. Next question. Question for Chief. Um, so some of these shootings, you know, um, you mentioned had juvenile, uh, juveniles part of them. You know, a new law will take in place where 18-year-olds will be able to le legally carry in July. What message do you have for people as, they, you know, they see these crimes and they kind of like um, are looking into the future and kind of like are scared of what the future crimes are holding? The only thing I can say is that we're going to continue our work. We are going to continue our investigations on everything from our detectives to our officers and those that are outside the law. We're going to hold them accountable. We're going to arrest them. Don't have anything to do with making the laws, but we will enforce the ones that we have on the books. In addition to all the shootings that happened this weekend, there was a big fight at one of the bars in Tigerland. Um, we heard, unfortunately, that guy died. Can you talk to us a little bit about what's going on and what the process is with that now? Yeah, so I um, spoke this weekend with LSU PD and their acting chief over there. We're working closely with them since it happened right off of campus. Our detectives are um, investigating that, tracking down several leads um, with some technology that we had, and we can hopefully uh, announce some results in that investigation in the near future. Can you tell us anything about, um, you know, was the fight, were they kicked out? Were, was this between people that they knew, or were they strangers, anything? It seems like it was a fight that started in the bar, spilled out into the parking lot at this time. And um, can you confirm the death of uh, Devin Rapath, like uh, part of that um, Tigerland bar fight investigation? Um, I'm not going to confirm anything right now. I do not know the status of family members that have been notified or anything. Okay. Um, I know that he was in critical condition at the hospital, which we, we've been released. And fo following to that, um, you know, there's been, um, is there like an increase of patrol in that area? Earlier this month, there was a 39-year-old woman who was also shot during a Tigerland area shooting. Yeah, so it's kind of separate, you know, the Tigerland mm -hmm. apartments yeah. in the back mm -hmm. and then the bar. Yeah. We do have officers that work that area, um, especially during the weekend, night hours for the bar, mm -hmm. and that is definitely an area that we're doing directed patrols. Last question, guys. Chief, I have a question for you. Um, being with all the recent killers and the, the, age, the age range for these children um, with the killers, will parents be held accountable for this? It's hard. I mean, it's hard to hold parents accountable. We will when we can, um, especially if they're leaving guns around where their kids can get a hold of them. But, you know, you can raise your kids the best of your ability, and after that, it's not much you can do with them when they get 14 or 15. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you all. Thank you all very much for coming.